Hello there, and welcome to a show 11 years in the making. Not even a pandemic could stop it. This is Pandemically, Pandemically Speaking. Speaking. I'm your host, Eleanor. And I am Scott. With the exception of a few lucky coma patients, no one is oblivious to the kinds of changes the coronavirus brought. And just like everywhere in the world, these changes affected us here at NWTC. Nevertheless, Scotty, the show must go on. We are finally back after a short break after the holidays, and boy, do we have a lot in store for you all. Well, that is right, Eleanor. We have six amazing and exciting shows today brought to us by our DMT students. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying that eight. I mean, I haven't seen them yet, but production says it's good. Anyway, <laughs> let's stop the chatter and get started. That is a great idea, Scott. First up, we have Whack Attack, brought to you by your very own host, Scott Smith. <laughs> yeah, and you know what they say. What the do they say? The first show is always the best. Scott, no. Nobody says that, Scott. I, I say that. No, no. Well, okay, let's let's cut the whack attack before uh, uh, Eleanor uh, attacks me. Scotty, nobody puts the best things first. Today, on whack attack with your boy, me, Scotty Smith, we're gonna be making an omelet. We're gonna be doing other things too because what we're gonna do but today we're gonna make an omelet so we gotta get our stuff so we got ourselves a weird looking bowl with a handle on it we got some uh, salt got some salt we got a deep plate a really small deep plate oh. onion we got ourselves an onion black pepper of course you need eggs for an omelet and we got some, some cheese. So that's what we're gonna be using today to make ourselves an omelet. Oh, just do it. Just bam! For the for the this thing. The omelet doesn't get all messy. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna make an omelet. Let's do this. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna need two eggs. Two eggs. There's enough in here, we're gonna take two of them out. We got our deep plate, and we're just gonna. There we go. Let's mix that all up in there. Another second egg. There we go. You really wanna stir it all up. Stir it all up. It's in the recipe. It said two eggs. Didn't it? Specified, no shells or nothing we needed. So you mix these up. All right, that should be mixed up pretty good. All right, so now that we have mixed up our eggs, we're gonna have to put them in this thing. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna wanna do is turn this on all the way up to high. We wanna cook it fast, spray it with that stuff. Pour it in there. Mmm, yummy. Oh, that looks really good. Make sure you get all the white, white in there. So we put it in there. Then I wait for it to cook. Oh, I forgot. We gotta put salt and pepper. So we got salt, or pepper, we got pepper. Actually, no, but first two salt. First two salt. Two salt. salt and we got our pepper and then we add our onion perfect we got onion in there and now our cheese now we'll wait for that to cook so once you hear it start cooking a little spatula or something and get it off the edges 
Yummy. You can just hear how crunchy it is. Oh my god, it sounds so good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Thanks for watching. Wow, Scotty! That was a really amazing and entertaining way to start off a show. S Scotty? Oh, I'm sorry. What? Sorry. Uh, were, were you that bored of your own show? I mean, I did film and edit it myself, so I've basically seen it over a hundred times. Oh, that's, well, that's true. Well, something that will keep you awake, and hopefully our audience too. That's right. Next up, we have Abby and Melissa making sure we're woke with Wisconsin's laws. Laws so absurd that you will be questioning it for your entire life. Are you staying woke on Wisconsin's laws? Because I know I am. I'm your host, Melissa. And I'm Abby. And each week, we plan to keep you up to date on laws you may not have even known existed. And for our very first episode ever, we are starting off strong with a law about what Wisconsin is famous for. You guessed it, it's cheese. Damn right. Let's cut to the cheese and get rolling. Did you just say cut to the cheese? <sighs> there is a formal definition of cheese and that definition explains specific varieties that fit its description. Wow, who would have thought cheese had a formal definition? The ATCP puts specific requirements around acceptable flavors of cheese. For example, the flavor of Wisconsin certified premium grade double A cheddar must be highly pleasing, while grade B cheddar only needs to be fairly pleasing. What? I did not understand a word you just said. Yeah, I know, it's really quite interesting. <laughs> While no definitions for these terms are provided, they do define 18 terms for flavor characteristics of cheese and 20 for body and texture characteristics, including, but not limited to, broken down, corky, and corky, crumbly, curdy, firm, gassy, mealy, open, pasty, pinny, reasonably firm, short, nope, Smooth, solid, compact, and closed. Sweet holes, translucent, waxy, and weak. <laughs> Whew, that was a mouthful. Hope we woke you up this afternoon with this weird Wisconsin law. I'm Melissa. And I'm Abby. Tune, Tune in next, next week to stay woke. <laughs> oh dear. Wow, that was an interesting one. Can you imagine going to jail over not having cheese and cheese? <laughs> I know, right? Imagine. My uncle can't relate. Your, your what? Speaking of flavor, next we have William Leto with his show Flavor Exchanger. You'd think it's a cooking show by the title, or maybe even the segue, but don't be mistaken. Flavor Exchanger is a show about music which William has never heard before. He hopes to expand his music taste and discover new artists along the way. Well, let's go ahead and see what William has in store for us. Hello, TC Weekly, pandemically speaking viewers. It's your resident mass-making juggalo here, Will. And today I'm bringing you an all new episode of Flavor Exchanger, the show where my friends and family give me an album that I definitely haven't heard of before, I listen to it, and then I tell you what I think. This week's episode, my mom gave me the suggestion of Kenny Rogers' album, The Gambler. It was recorded and released in 1978 and produced under Larry Butler. 
The album features 11 tracks with a total runtime of 39 minutes and 44 seconds. I had previously heard the title track, The Gambler, before just from being around my mom. Uh, she is quite a big fan of Kenny, so I've, I've heard like it in the background, but I've never paid any mind to it. I'm not a big country person. I do like respect all genres of music, but it just wasn't my thing, so I never really listened to it a whole lot. Uh, the notable tracks that stuck out to me in no particular order while listening to this album were track one, The Gambler, of course. Really good song. Uh, track two, I Wish I Could Hurt Like That Again. Track four, Making Music for Money. Track five, The Hoodoo-In of Miss Fanny DeBerry. And track seven, Tennessee Bottle. The one track that stuck out to me the most while listening to the album was on the song Making Music for Money where Kenny says, I won't make my music for money, gonna make my music for me. It resonated with me the most because uh, as an artist, I try to do like things for money. It's cool to sell pieces, but uh, I think it's more the fact just making a piece, putting your all into it really matters. I really enjoyed the overall storytelling of the album. It was really cohesive from song to song. It felt like a story, uh, like different chapters of a story. Uh, and it had a lot of really good bass and guitar mix throughout the album. I was surprised with how much uh, good bass lines were in a country album. That's usually not a very common thing, at least that I've come across. And it, it was a very pleasant surprise. I'm glad I listened to it. I'm glad I gave my mom's suggestion a chance. I don't regret it at all. And that concludes this week's episode of Flavor Exchanger. If you liked what you saw and you want to check out my art shenanigans, head over to Instagram at Wisconsin underscore mask underscore collector or on my Facebook, just Wisconsin Mask Collector. Have a good one. You guys can find him at a social media at William underscore Wisconsin underscore mask. All right. I'm going to have to check out those songs and artists after the show. Same here, Eleanor. I loved how unbiased and how open minded he was. I agree. Speaking up, next up we have Savannah with her show Cup of Joe. And speaking of Cup of Joe, is Bandstand Bingo for you? Bandstand Bingo is bingo, but with soundtracks. With soundtracks? Yeah, soundtracks. Be sure to sign up on the NWTC website, and you'll get an email and a Zoom link to join the game on Wednesday, February 10th. The 10th of February. Yep. That sounds like fun. You want to go? It's, it's a Zoom call, Scotty. Oh, I guess we could just do it from home. Yeah, you, that's, yeah do it from home. <laughs> Again, Wednesday, February 10th. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, Zoom call it. <laughs> well, uh, Cup of Joe provides us with an unbiased political review of President Biden's first weeks in office. On Biden's first day of office, he reportedly signed 17 executive orders, nine of which directly reversed policies put in place by the Trump administration. On the topic of immigration, Biden vowed to stop border wall construction and the Muslim travel ban, defend the Dreamers program for undocumented young Americans, change Trump arrest priorities for immigration and customs enforcement. The Department of Homeland Security announced a deportation moratorium, as the president called it. This would put most deportations on pause for 100 days. On the topic of climate change, Biden vowed to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. This will take 30 days to go into effect. He also says that he's going to end the Keystone XL pipeline and revoke oil and gas development at national wildlife monuments. Biden also rejoined the World Health Organization. On his first day of office, President Biden announced a nationwide face mask and social distance mandate on all federal buildings, lands, and by federal employees and contractors. There will also be a restructuring of the federal government coordination of the pandemic. Biden has created a new federal position of COVID-19 response coordinators. On the topic of the economy, Biden plans to extend eviction and foreclosure moratoriums. He also continued to pause on all student loan payments until September 30th. On the topic of civil liberties, Biden announced actions to advance racial equality through the federal government. Biden plans to strengthen workplace discrimination policies based on sexual orientation or gender identity. All last minute Trump administration regulatory actions have been frozen and Biden plans to formulate an executive branch ethics doctrine. He wants every executive branch appointee to sign the ethics pledge. These are all things that President Biden is able to do without the help of Congress, but he will need to consult them if he hopes to pass his $1.9 trillion relief bill.
Thank you, Savannah. Yes, thank you. That was so interesting. And I was able to catch up on stuff that's been happening over the last couple of weeks. For sure. It was quite handy after all that's been going on this past year. Speaking of handy, there's a handy minute coming right up. That's right, Scott. Next up, we have a handy minute brought to you by your very own special host, Eleanor. Yep. Yeah, let's, we do. Let's <laughs> you don't Thank seem very happy. Thank you, Scotty. Let's see what project Once Eleanor again, has for us today. Hey there, I'm Eleanor Sieber, and this is a Handy Minute. On today's segment, we'll be talking about how to fix those pesky squeaks for hardboard floors with a product you probably already own. For today's project, you'll need baby powder, a clean cloth, and a slightly damp rag. For better results, make sure to have a block of scrap wood and a hammer, preferably a rubber mallet, on hand. Our first step is to identify the problem area and sprinkle baby powder on top. Once your baby powder is applied, you're going to rub that in. The squeaks that baby powder can address come from boards rubbing together in between each gap. This can happen due to weather changes, foundation shifts, or even just the natural expanding of wood over time. So rather than mess with some kind of messy lubricant and end up ruining your floors because you don't know what you're doing, this is just a cheap 25 cent trick to keep the squeaks away for a couple of months at a time. If your floorboards are still squeaking, you're going to take a hammer and that block of wood, throw a towel underneath that piece, and just tap it in gently. If this worked and your floor no longer squeaks, congratulations! Take a lightly damp cloth or broom to clean up the mess. Keep in mind that this handy trick is only a temporary solution. And over time, the powder applied will be worn out of the grooves or vacuumed up, so you will most likely have to do this again. If that doesn't work, you can try letting the powder sit overnight, but chances are your problem comes from your subfloor. But that doesn't mean all of this effort was in vain. Finding out what doesn't work is just one path to finding out what does. And that is it for this week's segment of A Handy Minute. I will catch you again right here this time next week. But until then, back to Pandemically Speaking. Well, next up we have Behind wait, Bars. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have anything to say about your show? Not really, no. Oh. No. Well, I want to know what, how the, how about the behind the scenes, what you did. It was so <laughs> interesting. It was so interesting. I got powder on myself. That's, that's the, anyway. It was, it was simple. You know, that's why I called it a handy minute. Uh, but why talk about the behind the scenes of my project when we can talk about Dill and Damien's new music show, Behind Bars? Behind Bars is about hip hop artists who are getting through the pandemic and what resources they are utilizing. Let's see what bars they be spitting for today's episode. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Behind Bars, we'll be addressing some of the topics and strategies used while artists are dealing with the pandemic. Let's jump right in. Music artists and hip hop have been taking steps and strategies to move through the storm of the pandemic. Pandemically speaking, artists have either grown or have fallen during these trying times. Here are some artists who have utilized the pandemic to grow their careers, who, despite the pandemic, pushed their careers forward. To start off, the baby has recently said in an interview that the pandemic cost them $7 million due to them not being able to live perform. Meanwhile, MGK partnered with nine Northeast Ohio restaurants to give back to the community during schools being shut down and restaurants struggling at an all-time high. These restaurants include Black Box Fix and Sauce the City. He said, it still feels like I'm 17 in Cleveland at the airbrush shops in Tower City. In conclusion, in today's episode, you can see how to turn a negative into a positive during the pandemic. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Stay tuned next week on Pandemically Speaking where we'll be going through live shows through social media. Oh wow, those bars were Grammy worthy.
worthy. I think they deserve a Grammy for that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Visit our social medias below to comment and make your voice heard. All right, everyone. I am devastated to say this, but but Scotty, I swear to God. Okay, okay, I'm done. Uh -huh. That was our final show of the evening and the mark of the beginning of our very first episode of Pandemically Wait. Speaking. Scotty, that was not funny. I hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you next time. <laughs> I'm Eleanor. And I'm Scott, and, and this, this was Pandemically, Pandemically Speaking. speaking. Thank you.